All right, what it do, folks, man? I want to thank y'all for tuning in, man. I got my man Ice 3000 from the Turf Fiends right here on P-Town Media. Got Javen Harper. I'm your host, Ace of Spade. This is Access Granite, man, giving y'all that exclusive, man. What's up, my guy? How you feeling? Man, how y'all doing, man? It's Ice Club 3000, man. Oakland, California, man. What's doing good? good? Doing good, brother. We appreciate you hopping on the line, man. I know your time is short, so let's dive in, man. Um, let me ask you something, man. How did you fall in love with dancing? Uh, honestly, man, I wanted to do everything my older brother did, man, from knowing how to play basketball to dancing to every, every single thing that he did. That is what I embodied. You know what I'm saying? Everything that my big brother fell in love with, I, I liked it too because I wanted to be just like him. I used to want to dress like him and everything. So I think me having love for my big brother and the respect for him uh i got the love for dancing you know what i'm saying because it was anything that he liked i did too you know what i'm saying and for for, for him to see me turn this dancing into this he's like he's still impressed and i am too because i never even thought i was gonna do this i wanted to go to the nba you know i thought i was gonna do this i thought i was gonna be this type of player you know what i'm saying i'm looking at Steph curry now like damn blood for real we already got one of them but then man his birthday is the same day like me and Steph Curry, like we got the same birthday. So I'm like, bro, that really literally could have been me, but it's cool, I guess. So I don't get as mad as I could because it's like, it's not about money for me because as I got older and I start getting more into this dance thing, I knew it wasn't about the money because this, the shows I would agree to do, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't paying much. I just knew that I wanted to dance. Like that's something that I knew for a fact. Like at the end of the day, bro, I just want to dance. You know what I'm saying? And then with the quarantine, then when me and my teammates finally had a chance to meet up and make a video, I'm like, man, it's, it's just so good to feel like, like I'm dancing, to feel like I'm put, getting up shots. You know what I'm saying? After being injured for a while, like. Now this turf movement, did y'all create that or, or is that just something that was already in Oakland or are y'all the originators of that? No, no, no. We we are actually in like we inhabited that skill because it's a Bay Area based thing. Well, it was an Oakland based thing. I'm, I can't say Bay Area first. Because it was an Oakland based thing, you know, um, the like like everything, the the hood niggas started it actually. If, if we want to keep it so solid, they created this dance style because they was the main ones outside. They was the ones at the party. You know what I'm saying? They was the ones in the streets at the side shows when I was too young to be outside. Because, you know, the, the um, it started in 95. So I was five years old. You feel me? So. I'm five years old. I can't be outside, so I couldn't have created it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit here and lie and take the credit. You know what I'm saying? But if it wasn't for them, like, you know, they was doing what they do. It is what it is. But at the same time, they created an art form that we was also, that we was, like, privileged to grow into, like, grow up and see throughout all our years growing up, people dancing, people like, you know what I'm saying? We call it fucking with it. You know what I'm saying? So for us to have that, and then it's not a it's not a mainstream dance style or anything. It's not it's not highly appreciated by this and this dancer. You know what I'm saying? You don't see Usher talking about turf dancing. You don't see Chris Brown talking about it. But it's a style now that people it's like a it's almost like a high level of kung fu. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. people want to know how to do it and they try it and then they can't. So they disown it and they try to discredit it. Now, is it certain moves that y'all do? Is it something that y'all freestyle? Is it something you just feel, or how does it work? Um, like I tell uh, most of the young, most of the young cats that's growing up into the game now, into the turf dancing thing. Like I tell most of them, um, it's a shame y'all didn't get to see the variations of the styles of turf dancing. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a lot of different, like. I can say probably like 20 to 30 different bass styles, depending off a person's personality and where they was from. You know what I'm saying? And then different people where they was from had their own dance style within their own neighborhood. So that's how we was able to tell somebody was from West Oakland, North Oakland, East Oakland, wherever, Alameda, wherever. You know what I'm saying? We was able to tell by the way they move. You know what I'm saying? Like, like West Oakland, they was based off like fast, little quick little movements and like I don't know how to explain them. It's just, it's just like a little, uh, like a something that a turf and bounce that they call it. That's what the OGs call it. They call it like a turf bounce, and it's kind of like it kind of um, when when you talk to uh, dancing OGs out here, they you can kind of see that it comes from popping and boogaloo. You know what I'm saying? 
lines. Like you can kind of see that it comes from that because of some of the moves we take up doing, some of the some of the stuff that we that we do, our faces that we make. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of boogaloo and popping of the personality, and it was created out here too. Uh, a, a lot of the big boogaloo groups was created in the Bay Area, you know, in Richmond and all that. So it was only it was only right that those two styles have have similarities you know what i'm saying because you can't dodge this because growing up watching um what's that what's that uh with don cornelia soul train you know what i'm saying you grow up watching soul train and you grow up watching all these different shows breaking and then you imitate that stuff and then you make your own stuff out of that you know what i'm saying so that's how things grow because one person see it and then the way they the way they picture it in their mind, it comes out in physical form, you know, up then. So then that's how everything progresses because everybody's changing something with their own special abilities. So it's kind of like superheroes, you know what I'm saying? So when we see some of these young cats, when we outside or we doing what we doing, they they look up to us a lot because they grew up watching us on YouTube, just like me. I grew up going outside and having to watch the street cats do it, but they. The people under me watch me on YouTube, so it's gonna just keep oh, going and further going. Going, you know what I'm saying? Right. right. Real. Question for you. Um, outside of you, I mean, you're from the Bay Area, but what really drew you towards that style of dance, turfing? And then how long have you been doing that style of dance as well? Um, I've been doing this style of dance for about I can say probably about 13, 14 years now. So I started when I was like 15, I was dancing, but I also, I also am a big fan of jazz dance. And it's a jazz move called the kickball chain that I always do. If y'all see any one of my videos, I'm always doing it. And now, like when, before I came in, before I was a turf dancer, nobody was doing that. And then when I came into the game, I brought that. It's kind of like how Ginobili brought the Euro step. It's kind of like that, so that's that's. And I know the I, move. I'm actually throwing it up on the video so people can see that move because I know exactly that move that you're talking about, and I've seen that in a few different videos. And it's kind of like a signature thing you do. I kind of like it. I like it a lot, actually. It's like a small, slow, slow, smooth yeah. like kind of spin a little bit. I saw you do it in the E40 uh, clip that y'all did with the turf fiends, and that was in the parking lot, and had the the crew back. I use it as a as a promo for you. Exactly, exactly, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And it became a turf and foundation move, you know what I'm saying? Because over, 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 when people see me dance, they keep seeing me do that and they wonder why. And then the way that they view me as a turfer, they give me the respect and the OG that I am in the game at these at this point in time. So people, even as a youngster though, so I can't even say it's because I'm an OG because when I first came in, nobody was doing it. And I'm about a year in, and everybody in it is doing it. OGs, young people, new people, people that I started with. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, like I said, it's 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 similar to the Euro step. You know what I'm saying? How one player brought it and everybody started doing it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm kind of thankful for that, too, because I didn't make it to the NBA, but I got my own signature move. You know what I'm saying? So I get some of the same aspects I would have wanted when I was if I made it to the NBA, I'm getting it in this. You know what I'm saying? Even though I don't know I'd have been making way more money, but I'm st the influence is still here. The inspiration is still here. I'm still touching people. I'm still, you know what I'm saying? I'm still reaching out to people. I'm still being able to talk to people about what I do. I'm still able to do everything I wanted to do remotely as a basketball player. That's crazy, man. Could you uh, speak to or talk to a little bit about E40? Uh, you mentioned him being very pivotal in your career. Could you maybe talk a little bit about your relationship and how he's really exposed turfing and what it's done and what he's done for the dance style? Right. I mean, like E40, man, it goes without saying, man, how, how cool and close uh, our relationship is, man. Like I was just talking to one of my teammates earlier today about that. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like me and Chunky, like Chunky is my teammate that made up the dance called the Smees. Yeah, so if y'all heard of the dance called the Smees, like he's the creator that it's on Fortnite now. A lot of people doing, a lot of famous people were doing it. So it's like my team is star studied too. It's like we're we're like how the words is. We're you know what I'm saying? Like when they what is going on, they run. That's how we're depicted. Like our city views us as the championship team. You know what I'm saying? Because. The Raiders are gone. The Warriors are in San Francisco now, and Oakland still has a turf team. You know what I'm saying? So 
everybody root for us at like we're the home team so we're like a sports we we like it's so like i'm i the stuff i'm talking to y'all now i can't believe we reached this level because recently it, we just elevated in the bay area's eyes you know what i'm saying so this interview right. right now i really get to see how i feel about it and it's surreal like i can't i really can't believe that we reached this level of of interest from other people and the radar that we're on like we got an email from elton john's elton john's team before asking to go on tour and, and, you know what I'm that saying? is pretty tight <laughs> like pretty tight. when we got hit up from elton john i had to tell my dad like you know elton john hit us up like <laughs> like that like for real and my dad, didn't even, my dad didn't even want me dancing at first. You know what I'm saying? But I did a, uh, I did a halftime show for the Raiders game with G Easy one time, and he, you know he a Raiders fan, and he saw me at halftime. Didn't even know I was about to be on TV or nothing, and he like, like what? You know what I'm saying? And like he was, he's against me doing it, but now he just, he's like, you know what? You really one of them dudes. I keep seeing you on TV, and you're not even telling me that you're gonna be on TV. So, if I made my dad a believer, it's like nothing nobody can tell me because my dad was the main person against it. He didn't want me doing it. He told me if it don't make money, it don't make sense. And I said, Dad, I danced at a party. I danced at a party when I was 15 for two minutes and made $500. Like, wow. I've never did nothing else that short and made $500. I'm like, I can make That was money. legal. Like, that was legal. <laughs> Right. That was it right there. I'm like, okay, I can make money off of this. I already have fun doing it, but I can make money too. So let's let's, let's dig a little deeper. So you you play hoop. Obviously, you're good. I mean, you gotta you gotta have some skill. Now and then you start dancing. Now I've been noticing you working with some NBA ball players. Let's let's dig into that real quick. A little secret sauce. I saw you working with Draymond. I saw you working with Dame. Do a little video clip of you. At, you know, do a little dance off with Dame and getting him, of course, showing him what the, what the Steve is. Yeah. But I also saw you working with Draymond, and what caught my attention was this skip move that you showed him in the dance. I didn't realize I saw that on the court many a times, and he actually burnt some people with that move. Is that a secret <laughs> sauce? Hey man, uh, that when we was with Draymond outside that day, that was a Beast by Dre commercial that they were shooting to. Um, and they shot the uh, Tell Me When To Go. So they basically remixed the Tell Me When To Go video and put Draymond in place, you know, because the Warriors was on a championship run. So they had to find a way to incorporate everything. And, you know, E-40, again, with the stamp of approval, oh, y'all need the turfings in this. And then not only was it that, his stamp of approval, we had did like a, sh we had did a gig in LA years ago with, um, I I threw I think it's I through D or I something like that, but it was the alphabet of dance. And they had sketches of us from that video. So they've been planning for years with us this. So, you know, cause I ask questions. I get I get there and I ask questions. I'd be like, how did y'all know that y'all wanted us for this project? And they showed us, like, well, they showed me because I asked a question. You know what I'm saying? They showed me and I'm like, this is big. Like, bro, do y'all know they've been sketching us for years? like way before this so it's like when i'm at home chilling now i'm just thinking about like what's going on and today i'm gonna tell y'all today was a, a weirdly good day because i got this interview going on somebody else had hit me about something and then um blind spotting is coming out with a tv series now and we just got hit up for that and somebody else won us in the spot for a movie that's supposed to be getting shot sometime during march so Today was a weird day, weirdly good day, I'd say. You know what I'm saying? So I think now that people have to realize is that the working from home thing is like a it's like a privilege now, bro. It's like an extra privilege because you get to still handle you and your business at the same time. You know what I'm saying? It's not about what you out there doing. Like some people still need that outside image, like this them moving around because it's an image to have, but you can still handle the same type of business sitting down in the comfort of your own home. And that's something I have to realize. Like, I can still bust these moves from in the, in the house while I'm playing video games. And then I get a call to where I got to just go to L.A. the next day and turn around and come back. Like, if I can, I can move as a manager and an agent that easy, 
You know what I'm saying? From the resume that I built at the, as a dancer. So now I'm in a position to put other people on that's up and coming in my city. Like, I don't even have to go anymore. If I don't choose not to, I can just send somebody else now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the privilege of doing that into the opportunity to give other people shine is like, I love that. Like, you know, that's why I like LeBron because he he passes the ball. You know what I'm saying? Jordan and Kobe, they're going to take the last shot because it's, it's they feel like it's on them. Me, I trust my teammates. I trust my people around me. I trust my community. So I'm going to give them a shot. You feel me? I'm going to pass them the ball and see what they do with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I've never been a selfish dude. Like, when I play basketball, I like passing the ball, too, as well as scoring. So a lot of my basketball skill set I can use in this, in this too. So it makes it easier for me because I operate this as if I'm playing basketball. I, I run my career as if I'm playing basketball still. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's like and it's crazy because I've run into basketball players. Like I ran into Steph Curry on Bart before. Did some dance moves for NBA 2K. I got my jump shot on there. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? You got your jump shot on NBA 2K? Yeah. So basketball right. things have happened for me. And uh, shout out to my teammate, Frenchie, baby, because he the one that, that handled the email and everything for that NBA 2K stuff. So shout out to Frenchie, baby, man. He do big things right now, man. He he got a million followers on TikTok right now, man. So he just hit a million. Uh, he been on uh, Germany's Got Talent. Uh, America's Got Talent just recently. Uh, he's the uh, dude with the bone breaking uh with the with, you'll know him because he got a little cut right here it's like a new demolition man hairstyle so you see you're gonna notice him bro like you know what i'm saying so i got it's like i don't solely take the credit for myself because i didn't build this by myself you know what i'm saying i came on a team but i am i i will say that i'm highly responsible for a lot of of the success because of where i where i position myself for this team you know what I'm saying? I, I step out the dancing role sometimes and I become manager. And I, you know what I'm saying? Once I learn, I, I got a lot of my, a lot of manager skills and, and being an agent stuff from, from TV. You know what I'm saying? When I watch movies and stuff, I see them trying to get, like break deals and stuff. And then this price don't fit. So they come with counter offers and stuff. I picked up on that and start applying that. And then it worked. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They offered us 800 I said, nah, bro, we need 13 and They said, you know what? You're right. And I'm like, bro, I just used some TV shit on these niggas, and that shit worked. They lowball you on the first offer, man. Just right. let you know that. They always lowball you so that way you can counter. And then you exactly. and so typically exactly. there's gonna typically if you're if you're wise, you're letting go two counters in the close. Yeah. So the 13, like nah, 15. Okay, that, okay. That way, Thanks if they challenge that, you at 15, you go back to 13. You're like, all right, we could be 13. I'll be, get, I'll be getting the opportunity to practice things because I get hit up a lot for stuff. So I, I have the opportunities to work on these things. But I, I like I said, I've never had nobody actually teaching me how to move and groove like this. One of my teammates, the uh, he's the creator of the Turfings. He's one of the four people that made the Turfings. He's still active on the team to this day. His name is Looney Rayshawn Thompson. But he he taught me how to network. He taught me how to talk to people. You know what I'm saying? So, like, like when LeBron went to Miami, D-Wade taught him how to win, right? So, when I got on the Turfings and I got around Looney, he taught me how to win. You know what I'm saying? And ever since from, from that day forth to now, it's a testament to Looney. You know what I'm saying? So, I, get, I can get all the surface wins I want, but I wouldn't have none of that if it wasn't for him. You get what I'm saying? So I always know how to acknowledge like where how I got here, who helped me get here, whatever. Whether it's somebody letting me sleep on a couch because I was homeless at a point in time, that's still helping me get to where I have to be. So that's I right. can't I can't leave these people out when I give my thank you speech. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. they helped me get to where I am. Because I, anything could have happened if they didn't allow me to do that. You know what I'm saying? So let's segue into some good stuff I don't that Looney that. has done for you. Me and my band were just looking at some of your video stuff that you had going on. Um, JB was looking at the Chris Brown video. Um, oh, yeah, man. yeah, talk about that. Did you guys have any battles in the background? You know, sometimes it's always a cool little dance battle in the background we don't see. Did you get him? Just, say, just curious. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm. All right, so me and Chris Brown, bro, we got some, we got some, we got, a, we got some baby history, right? So, like I said, E40 stamp of approval. We did the Function remix video. You know, Chris Brown is on that song. 
So we did the video in LA. All right, so we get to the video shoot. Hold on. All right, so we get to the video shoot, right? We get to the video shoot, man. All right, we chilling. Chris Brown get there. He comes shake everybody's hand, you know what I'm saying? Shakes everybody's hand. It's cool, it's chilling, everybody's vibing. You know what I'm saying? Later on that day, after he shoot this scene, you feel me? I go outside, he outside at the same time. So I say, uh, I say, Chris, bro, uh, what's up with some rounds, bro? He say, what's up? Some, see, they like said some dance rounds? And I say, uh, yeah. And he like, uh, he said, it's good, right? He said, it's good. And then the rest of the day, I've, I've never heard nothing from him again, right? So I basically called him out and he basically didn't want to battle, right? So <laughs> I have a dance battle one day, like a two, three years later, I have a dance battle and I do this one move. You know how Odell do the one hand catch? Yes. So I, I did a move that almost resembles that. And then Chris Brown posted a picture of him doing just that in the same position to where it's all the way to lean back to where he did and he caught the ball. So everybody was tagging me in this picture talking about Chris Brown stole your move. Chris Brown did this. Ooh, ooh. I say one thing, Chris Brown comes on my Instagram. He's and I'm blocked to this day. Till this day, I'm still blocked from Chris Brown. He comes <laughs> on my Instagram. We we get into it about it. We into it about basically some dance stuff, bro. And then it, it just go left from there. And then all his fans is on my Instagram. Get like, you know what I'm saying? Basically taking this side. And I'm just like, bro, it's people tagging me on your Instagram. I don't even follow you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even follow you. You can see that yourself. So don't tell me to stay off your page when I don't follow you. I only came here because I'm getting tagged in your post. Then from there, he say, stay the fuck off my page and block me. You feel me? Then... I see him at the video shoot. He gets out the car, comes up. He has the shades on. He scanned the room. Well, we was outside at the time, the little outside area of the scene by the house, the nighttime. So he scanned mm -hmm. that. And then he stopped on me. And he shake his head on me. And then he just started smiling. He just started laughing. So every time we would get near each other at the video shoot, it would just be some laughing. It wasn't no other words. We didn't say nothing to each other. It was just, just laughs the whole time. Like, just laughs. And I'm like, my teammate, like, bruh, you already know what I'm thinking about. And I said, yeah, I already know what you want. Like, you remember, you know that he blocked me, so you want me and him to talk about it. Like, bro, I don't think me and him are going to talk about it today because look how it's going. You feel me? He's not trying to talk about it, but he know it's me. Yeah, he you know what I'm saying? And then my teammate had asked him, hey, bro, can we get a picture before we cut? He said, uh, like... Him and my cousin kind of looked the same, so he made a facial expression that reminded me of my cousin. Like, oh, yeah, he on some cash shit. He ain't about to take no picture with us. Like, especially with me here. That's how I'm thinking. He not he know who I am. He's not going to take no picture with me. And I feel like the only reason it was like that because we was at g Easy shoot and not his. Let me ask you a question. I, I know they got a mural that's featuring you in the town. Um, that's a great honor, by the way. Um, and beautiful mirror, Miro. Um, how did that come about, by the way, the mural? Um, so uh, Timothy B, him and his team with Creative Shields was the people who actually did the art itself. And um, actually, he, he had reached out and was like, he wants to paint somebody that's big to Oakland and that that means a lot to turf dancing. You know what I'm saying? So I had a lot of I had a lot of tags. I'm not gonna say other people didn't have tags. You know what I'm saying? But I had a lot of tags to the point to where it was like, okay, I'm gonna use you. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was an honor by him to do the art, but it was a more of an honor from all the people who had tagged me over other people. You know what I'm saying? So it was more it was more of I'm the people's champ kind of stuff, kind of situation. It was more of being the people's champ in that situation because it was like you know, I'm not the big headed type of character. I'm not finna tell you all my accomplishments. I'm not finna run you down. Oh yeah, I just did this with Chris. I'm gonna post it, but I'm not finna be in your face. I'm like, yeah, man, I just did this video with Chris Brown, bro. Like, that's not me. You'll never, if we hang around each other, you'll never hear me talk about my accomplishments. You'll, we will talk about everything but that. Cause I feel like that type of stuff. Well, being where I'm from, honestly though, it's like being successful like that. And I grew up in the hyphy movement. Like, it looks fun now, but the hyphy movement was the most dangerous part of Oakland, if you ask me or anybody that lived in it. Like, if you survived that, you're looked at as an endangered species. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
because it it was just so like I don't see how we survive like leaving dance battles and, and stuff like like it like stuff happened to us bro like stuff happened to us by like some of the biggest gangs in Oakland and it bro it's like reliving that is so crazy I think about it like bro like people did this and this and this but they never shot us like people never shot the turkeys because it's like they would do this and they they it's like you know how you got a team of people and then you got the people everybody know about and then you right. got the other members so the other members were the people getting like the worst of the worst done to them like uh -huh. they were the ones coming out with black eyes they was the ones in position like they made sure the top tier terpenes was always good we walking down the street every hood every block is making sure that we okay like the old school like the old school sports players like they used to be in high school and all the all the like all the drug dealers making sure they cool and got money in their pocket because they stay mm -hmm. at home with the single mom and she always working so they they looking out for them on the streets taking care of them like that that's how it was for us you know what i'm saying i can tell y'all be all over oakland too through y'all videos i'll be seeing Definitely. some of the places i've located on y'all be sometimes it's some sketchy places sometimes but it's just like the love of the community like you said they protect you guys and, and that's what's dope is because i noticed that it's like he's in this particular neighborhood and not mess with him because he dancing in that neighborhood and i know that neighborhood don't mess with that neighborhood and, but nobody's yeah. messing with you guys and they letting y'all just dance and that's cool man yeah man but it's like it's like the history with dancing out here like like i said the hood niggas started the dancing so mm -hmm. they look at it now like uh like me going to parties bro my whole school teenage all the function stuff all i used to hear like oh shit, here go these dancing ass niggas every time we heard that they was like like i didn't know how to take it like is it a good thing or a bad thing because all the girls was just that the dancing ass niggas was there but some of the niggas is mad that the dancing ass niggas. so i don't know and then y'all look at then i look at cats like Sada baby and he's he's indulging the dancing ass nigga shit. you know what i'm saying like he's 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 taking on that and and he's and he's a rapper you know what i'm saying like he's taking on a, a, a identity that that people in his category look down on you know what i'm saying and he's making it this and then that that alone helped people fuck with dancing again i'm not gonna lie like rappers like him made people appreciate dancing again you know what i'm saying because he already told people how he grew up he grew up a church kid he grew up knowing how to dance and all this stuff like the way he is now is it that's what he do bro but he's he's all he's still a person at the end of the day it's like y'all be expecting hood people to not really know how to dance. He's like, bro, I love dancing. You know what I'm saying? He's like, I, I, I used to go to church all of a sudden. It's like people have a background. Just because you're you in this profession, you're still a person. You still have a background. You still have something that helps you get you here. You still have a unique something that helped you who you are right now. So, man, I thank you very much, man, for giving us your time. You know, absolutely. A lot of people in Portland has been seeing the turf the turf fiends movement. Um, and as soon as I've been posting pictures and saying that we was going to interview you guys, a lot of people in Portland automatically start tuning in because they was like, man, we don't get celebrities that often here. And on top, we mess with the Bay, man. Come on. Right. We, we so close to y'all. We mess with y'all. So to be able to right. have this opportunity to be able to see some of the people who is close to their, their fans and celebrities, you give them a behind the scene view. I've known you've done some great things. So let them know where to find you and also what music videos they can maybe check you guys out. Okay, uh, you can follow us on our, um, our Instagram at the Turfins. That's T H E T U R F F E I N Z. You know what I'm saying? Or it's the same on Twitter. Uh, you can check, uh, follow us on Twitter, and then from our page, you can you can see each individual member up in our story, so you can see how they dance. You can see what we look like. If you want to book a certain style or whatever, look for your video. There it is. There. Um, also, with the music videos that we in, man. I mean. You could type in E40 and look at E40, and we all threw that. Um, you, uh, G Easy videos, Kaylani, Kaylani, all me. Um, uh, this is this isn't the first time we've been in a video with Chris Brown. Like I said, the Function Remix video, and then you got a bunch of my other teammates in the uh, AEO Chris Brown video. I mean, bro, we we've been in a lot of music videos. It's it's so many, bro. I can go all day, but I didn't forgot a lot of them. When I'm on YouTube, I can't even find some I was in, bro. Like when I be trying to show my mom and stuff, so it's like 
it's it's just man it's like just go to the page man you can catch up on our history and then the, you feel me like the terpenes man it's like i ain't gonna lie man like this is it's crazy where we at now man so i appreciate y'all man for even having having the time for me bro even reaching out and you man for keeping up with keeping tap, staying tapped in how you are with me bro like i appreciate that bro like that's that's, that's i appreciate that bro that's me we all we got you know? <laughs> what love Show sure, man all right baby yeah. we're gonna go ahead and let you go I got some, my teammates gonna come down there soon, bro. Like for real, cause you know we already got some. We got some big stuff happening with Dame this year. Please tap in. You know we gonna take care of you and your team, man. When y'all slide through, we know good places to eat, good places to treat. You know what I'm saying? And whatever else you y'all tap in with us, man. P Town Media, man. You want to give us a shout out while you can? Oh yeah, oh, man. Shout out. Yeah, man. Shout out to P Town Media, man. They always holding down, man. Portland, man. You already know how they get down with it, man. Y'all see the. The nice team, the nice production, the nice setup, the nice gear. Feel me, the all black man. You see him over there, man. You see the dude in the yellow, man. Y'all know who that is, man. ASAP, man. ASAP Spade, man. It's good, man. I love y'all, man. Thanks, bro. But well, hey, man, this is your boy ASAP Spade. It's your boy Javon Harper, man. Stay locked in P Town Media, where everything is everything. Black excellence, man. P Town Media, built by the people for the people. We out. Your access has been granted. Bang. <laughs>